And today we're going to find out which of the mechanics are right. Hey, this is Kent with Living Light RV and I have a story to tell you and we're going to change out something today. So here's where I'll start. We towed this vehicle, this is Ruby, we towed this vehicle all the way to Salmon Arm. We are going to drop off our motorhome and we are going to carry on to Abbotsford with Ruby. But we got there, we unhooked, we did something that I think is the error that caused our problems and uh, long story short, we couldn't use the vehicle. We left the vehicle connected to the motorhome, we towed it all the way to Abbotsford, we tried to fix it there, we towed it all the way back to Calgary, dropped it off at a dealership, came back here, and then we came and picked her up from the dealership two weeks later because it wasn't still fixed after lots of money was spent. So, let's get into it. There had been a problem about three weeks before we left. We had one of our battery terminal clamps was broken. So when we were in, in Chilliwack, Abbotsford, we replaced the battery, we replaced the terminals, and we did a bunch of other things. We replaced the throttle body, and it still wouldn't work properly. It'll start, it'll go up to 1800 RPMs, which is not enough, quite enough to shift, but it won't go past that. So we knew there was a problem. Uh, my brother-in-laws, two of them, they both have their readers and they both determined that the code was the throttle body, but we replaced it twice, one with a used, one with a new, no difference of problem. The problem didn't go away. So I took it to the dealership in Calgary, like I said. They said, oh, we have to replace the alternator and the multi-fuse. I knew the multi-fuse had gone, uh, unfortunately, and so they replaced the alternator. And then they said, oh, there's a problem. The vehicle's not running. And I'm like, like I told you at the beginning. So they said, well, we can't go anywhere unless we replace the throttle body. Third throttle body, but they had to do it because they're a dealership. Fine, whatever, that's how dealerships are. So they replaced the throttle body and they went, wow, there's still a problem. I'm like, oh my gosh, of course there is. So we've determined that it's probably the computer, it's a US car, the Canadian dealership was not sure if they could actually solve the problem by getting a new off the shelf computer and reflashing it and I'm like hey I've already got you, I've already got a bill that's way too high so I brought it home. So I ordered a ECM, PCM, they're both the same. ECM, BC, PCM, one is the emissions control module, the other one is the power control module. They're both the same unit. I've replaced it with one that I have from eBay, and today we're going to find out which of the mechanics are right. See, some of the mechanics say, oh yeah, you can replace it as long as it's all the same codes, same numbers. Other mechanics say, no, 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 it has to be flashed, it has to be... Uh, uh, the VIN number has to be installed. So I've gotten a bunch of bit different stories. Today we're going to find out which story is true. Stay tuned. I got this one off of eBay. What I did first is I got my phone down in there and I took a picture of the label of that uh, ECM before I uh, went and bought one. And so what you see, first of all, that code tells you the main module, but I wanted to make sure all of these codes were identical to what I have in the vehicle. So that's what I got off of eBay. I used one with uh, a seller that has high ratings, uh, very high. He, he actually packaged, once I paid for it, he packaged it and got it labeled and sent within one hour. It was amazing. Uh, I got it two days before well, three days before it was scheduled at the earliest of getting to me. So it was even ahead of schedule on that. 
So I d got this one, it came from Texas. This car came from Texas. So I'm confident that there's no Canadian US uh, problem in installing this. So what I have to do is I have to get this uninstalled. I have to get this bracket taken off and whatever bracket down there is taken off. I think it's with a 10 millimeter. So I'm gonna get into that today. Um, first thing I'm gonna do is disconnect the battery and then I'll start taking out that uh, PCM, ECM, and then I will reinstall and then I will see if my problems go away. All right. I can't believe it. I've, I've gone onto YouTube and other sources to see what do I need to do and there is no good reference as to what will or what won't work. We've called up some major mechanics, we've called up, uh, uh, well we had it in the dealership uh, to get it repaired and nobody has a good answer as to what's going to happen. So today I don't know what the end result is going to be. Uh, I'm hoping that that replacement will just let me fire it up and it'll all be good. So let's get into it. So a lot of you know that I'm suffering still with an autoimmune disease but this is all the kind of work that I can do without any problem. So I'm glad I can. All right. So I've got my rag so that that thing can't pop up here and touch the battery. All right, I see the two bolts that I need to take off, this one here and one down there. Uh, I think those will be the only two. And I'm gonna take off the connectors before I get too carried away. All right, so I've taken the two bolts off that I can see here. And I'm trying to determine if there's a if there's one more that connects it. I think I might have to take the battery out in order to get to what's ever down there. Okay, there's another bolt. So this is what's also holding this bracket in place. So I'm glad I took the battery out. So now I can see that. I think this whole replacement could actually take 40 minutes at the most really, but I'm taking my time. I'm not in a hurry today. I don't have anything better to do other than make my car work. All right, let's see, is this a 10 millimeter? So the vehicle is a manual transmission. It's a 2012 Hyundai Acura, no, Accent, uh, and a 1.6 liter engine. So this is an equal swap. All right, ready to take this and go and install it in the vehicle. I'm inspecting all the pins, making sure they're all straight uh, as they should be. And I'm inspecting the pins on the broken one and they look identical also. No pin damage. I'll leave that one there. Okay. So, got the new... Dang. Alright. I'm going to drop my flashlight. Uh, uh. Autoimmune diseases are not fun. So this goes in exactly just like I took the other one out. That goes there, that goes there, that goes there. Let's get those three bolts in place. And then we'll get the battery dropped into place. All right, so this one goes here. This one goes here. Yeah, we're at Aspen Crossing and they are putting one more car on the Halloween train. So they have to move it around, getting ready for Thursday. Recap is the ECM used off of eBay 
it worked. Make sure the codes are exactly as they need to be to have an equal match. I mean all the codes. And good luck. Like, for a Hyundai 2012 Accent 1.6 uh, liter engine made for the US market, manual transmission, and I got that swap to work and to work well. No such thing as a needing the key to be reprogrammed or anything like that. All is well. That's the end result, guys. So there's one more win for the team that wants to do it yourself and not take it to the dealership. Uh, so I think it's a win for everyone. Have a great day and take care. See you down the road. All right, let's go for one more drive. This is so cool. Ah, uh, yeah. All right, so this is great. The revs go all the way up. Uh, there is one pro tip that I wanted to get to, and that is when we got to Salmon Arm, we were in towing mode, which means the key was all the way, all the way turned, and the power, power at the battery was disconnected, so that you could release the steering column. That's how we tow. That's one of the things that are that are that has to be. But I think what happened is the power got to the battery, turned back on while the key was still turned in the ignition before we had taken that key out. So my pro tip is be careful with your ignition. Uh, don't just drop the power back onto it from the battery if your key is engaged. Uh, I don't think the ECM was prepared for that and I think that's what caused the issue with the ECM. So that's the pro tip. That's my learning for the day and uh, so that we all can tow without uh, those kinds of problems of taking an ECM and damaging it. So that's my pro tip for the day. Woohoo! This is great! Yeah, I am back in business with having my car. Cool.